All right, guys, it's a deer hunter, 50 caliber traditions. Side, side loader, old school. 40 yards. That's not good. Now when the cap goes off, but it doesn't fire, I like to hold it safely and steady in that direction for about a minute. And then I'll put another fresh cap on it and see if that's what it was. Take the nipple pick and clean it out a little bit. Let's see how that did. All right, from here, out there it was 40 yards. Now, last time I shot that Traditions, that was a foot low at 40 yards. So I aimed a foot high, hoping it's gonna be on what the circle is. There's a circle stamp down there on that package, on that cardboard box. So we'll see. Whoa. Here's what I was talking about. I aimed up here about a foot high because I had marked that it was a foot high at 40 yards. As you see, that's pretty close to being dead on. Might shoot one more time. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load another one because this beautiful background I've got behind me. And I want you to see how fast Maybe a guy can load. Ooh, that one's a broken one. I won't use that. That's make that run about 20 grains instead of 50. Uh, so, all right, here's my two 50 grain uh, American Pioneer powder, 50 caliber sticks. It's a compressed charge. So, the two of them together looks like it'd be about almost two inches all right so i'm gonna put them down in there first trying to stay in the camera right here there's one 
There's two. All right. I'm gonna put this down in there. Okay. There's my powder. All right, let's get another one of these. Ridgeback Sabbat, deadly accurate. Been pretty consistent. I'm sure the only thing off on those two targets was me. All right, so this is pretty powerful. It's a 250 grain, which is humongous. When I've killed deer with 55 grains in a 223 before, uh, 250 grain and um, fits right in there. This is 200 yard plus muzzle loader accuracy. Polycarbonate tip. Okay. Yeah, you can see if you look close to it. I'll bring that up a little bit. I'm not sure it'll focus on it. Polycarbonate tip. Um, ensures devastating performance. Now, it's been a while since I've taken a deer with a muzzleloader. They're a lot of fun. I mean, they, with that size bullet, they open up a big hole. All right, again, I'm gonna start with a bullet starter. Small tip end. And a lot of people will hold it, pound it in. Once it's seated down in the end of the barrel, shove it down the rest of the way. Again, that's about four or five inches. Then you bring out the big boy. Long ramrod. And here we go. So the only thing I like now is the well, sometimes that cap will stay on there after it fires, but a lot of times it'll split. And it comes off. So I usually take a screwdriver or something like that. Pull it off just like that. And again, you've done a lot of work. And if you're waiting for the deer, you want to make sure. I'm sure you can see that, but I like to take a nipple pick or a pipe cleaner. Sometimes they work. Scrape around that nipple. Going into the breech plug to make sure that the tiny, I mean, it's a tiny opening. Make sure that opening is clear <coughs> so that your, what I put in there is those American Pioneer pellets get the spark. All right. So all I've got left. Again, I was telling you how some people are splitting up the packages. Here's what they do right here. Split them up and put them in a little Ziploc baggie. I think I got 50 of them for about 15 bucks, which is well worth it when you're desperate. Especially if you wait till the week of uh, your season before you check if you had everything. And like, if you're like me, I realized I did not. Poor planning on my part. All right, so the deer comes out down there, especially out around that ridge right up here while I'm getting ready to shoot. I'll just... I'll make that my target. I mean, I move 
anything to target would be much funner and certainly it would be tastier. All right, see the cap fully on there. Okay, guys. Woo -hoo -hoo, that was some good smoke. Real good smoke. Let's go see how we did. All right. Let's lower this camera a little bit so I can carry it around. And of course, I'm gonna have a short version of this on my channel, because nobody wants to see somebody fumbling around. I'm trying to wake up the west end of Huntington down here. All right, let's see how we did. Ooh, I don't see a hole. That's not good. Not good at all. Uh-oh. Missed it. Or, as some of the gunslingers would say, he just went through the same hole. I hear somebody else shooting down there over the ridge. Yeah, no shot. Uh-oh, that's not good. Not good at all. We'll have to watch that video and see what happens. All right, guys, nice evening again. I better get off here. Gonna meet my lovely wife for dinner. Uh, get me a good meal. I'm hungry. It's hard out here playing like this. All right. Let's reload. Here, as you can see, I'm using these American Pioneer powder uh, pellets. They're a replacement. Clean. Supposed to be cleaner. Um... First I've ever used them. You can see here they are a cylinder and not quite an exact cylinder. That allows them to wedge in there a little bit. Now, these are 50 grain, so I always put two in. There's one. There's two. All right, got my ramrod marked. If I insert it and it's empty, that's my empty mark. All right. Shove them down in there. And you can see that will be the length of two of them. All right. All right, there's powder. Now let's put these are what they call 50 caliber Ridgeback Sabbath Smackdown Carnivore. Man, they got some good names for them. All right. So this has got the red jacket on it. Show it to you right here. Easy to go down the barrel. Not a lot of stuffing it down there. You're not pounding and jumping up and down. And everything else to get it down in there. All right. So, let's see if I can get that.
focused on there. You can see I'm trying to get it started in here. Here's the starter ball. Use this tip first on there and get it started that way. Being a little bit stubborn. All right, there it goes. Then you use a longer end, about four or five inches. Pound that down in there. Pull that out. Ramrod. Now, see your ramrod also has an opening um, indention right there so that you can fully seat it. All right. There we go. All right. Now, the only thing left is to put a cap on there. Now, I like to take in between shots, take my nipple pick. Now, the old cap's still going to be in there, so lift that out. You don't want it anyway. I like to take a nipple pick here. Tool, you can see it's fully retractable. I like to take it and put it up in that nipple between shots. You can see that goes all the way up in the breech plug. Clean that out a little bit. Make sure that spark has an opening to get into so that your powder pellets ignite. All right, now I'm gonna take the camera back over there where I'm gonna shoot from. And you can see downrange there. Again, it's 40 yards. So now I have all that I have to do. Put this tiny little cap on the nipple. Make sure it's fully seated in there. All right, let me set this down. two in a row. All right, now, before we start, these little number 10 or 11, you could use either one. One of them is just a little bit longer than the other one, but they have the same inside diameter. Now, they got so scarce that uh, people were buying them up Afraid they couldn't have any when they needed them. So because of that, they even got more scarce. And so some of the buyers were buying them and uh, they were splitting them up into bags and selling them as smaller packages. 
Here you can see beautiful sunrise. City of Huntington down over that way. All right, let's go take a look at Target. Now, since I told you when I first started, I believed that to be a foot low at 40 yards, so I aimed a foot high. Now, in order for consistency, I did the same thing. So I'm hoping, even though that thing was blowing in the wind, that it's gonna be fairly close. Let's see. First shot, right here. Second shot, right here. Not real good. But about four or five inches off. That's a kill zone of a deer. But you'd want to shoot that a lot more to get your group a lot smaller to ensure success if you spend all day and maybe a lot of money out traveling uh, on a hunting trip or whatever uh, you want not to miss you want it to be accurate all right so that's going to finish my shooting today i'm going to clean that gun up real good you got to take care of them guys because that powder is so corrosive to that metal and so uh, you want to make sure you're cleaning it up and getting it put up alright guys again we're going to close with a beautiful sunset now, I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in. Here, that sabot got wad almost blown clear down here to the target. I didn't notice where the other one went. But, oh yeah, okay, here it is. All right, so both of them within a few feet of each other. Here's somebody's that 2250 shell within a few feet of each other. So I'm shooting over there, uh, about 25 yards. These things blew out. All right, so I don't wanna make you too dizzy up here with this camera going all over the place, but it is beautiful up here. Absolutely beautiful place, peaceful. I need to be here instead of in the classroom. Hey guys, have a good day.